Hi, welcome to another episode of Prior Power, Power Principles. We're at episode 24, and today we're going to be talking about divine guidance through prior. But before we start, we're going to talk to our best friend. So I'm going to invite Elder David to pray with us. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you that you invite us because of the blood of Jesus, because of his sacrifice on our behalf. Invite us into your presence. And that as Jesus prayed, that you're, you would love us like you love him. Father, we just thank you that you have received us in Christ. And, and Father, I just ask that you would uh, take possession of this time that we give to you. I'm asking that the spirit of prayer would come over us. I'm asking that the spirit of truth would open your word, that you would teach us, that you would connect us with Jesus in the school of prayer, that you would instruct us, and that you would open the eyes of our understanding to receive guidance, and that Jesus himself would be our wonderful counselor today. We pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so testimony time. So I'm going to be brief with my testimony and then hand over to Elder David. You know, so last week I was saying um, there was this particular friend that on more than one occasion that have questioned me about my diet. And, you know, being an Adventist, I'm, I believe most of us have gotten that uh, question or a barrage of question. Why are you vegan? Why are you vegetarian? Why do you eat a certain way? And you know, so while some of us may not be able to go to the depth of explaining, I do believe that the world as a whole, they're seeking to be healthier. And they, they know by research that, you know, eating a vegan diet is, you know, remarkably more, uh, it's healthier than eating yes. meat. So, um, so recently, you know, this particular person asked me about my diet, and I just, you know, gave some you know, a few responses. And I said, you know, as Adventists, we tend to want to, you know, eat as the Bible says. And when we go to heaven, we will not have any chicken or <laughs> beef or beef noodle sure. or whatever you eat. Nothing but it will, will die be, there. Sorry? There <laughs> Nothing will, be, will die there. Exactly. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> there will be no death, including animals, a cow and a goat and everything that I know most of you, you know, probably watching like to eat. But, you know, um, about a month after, I had no idea this was happening, but a month after I spoke with this individual and they said to me, you know what, based on what you've said, I've decided to try, try, just test out. And the person said to me, I've lost weight in a month and I'm going to continue this wow. pathway. So when I heard that, I was like, wow, I had no idea that I had this impact on this person so just by them observing. I didn't say anything. I didn't share any little sermonette or talk about anything it was just um them watching what i had eaten and from that they asked questions and i just shared and then they decided to test it out and saw that they lost weight and they de decided to now continue being a vegetarian so i believe you know god has a thousand ways of us just without saying a word but to testify yes <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, that's my testimony is similar to that. Um, uh, someone called me last Sabbath and had been struggling with health issues and uh, they've been trying to change their diet. Um, grew up eating meat a lot, you know, just regular American diet, you know, and but ended up with serious health problems. And so they began to realize that they needed to change their diet because a lot of it was diet related. And, and sure enough, when they changed their diet, um, things would get better, but to, to, it, it was so different than what they used, were used to doing. They keep falling back and they would eat certain things and it would just cause terrible disruption in, in, in their health issues, you know? And um, this has gone on now for two years terrible pain and and mm -hmm. just it's been very serious so um last sabbath uh they were they were just at wit's end just i can't do this anymore they had lost lots of weight they were in you know phys a lot of physical pain and and just 
at the end of the rope, just at the end, can't take any more. And, and mm-hmm. so uh, somebody said uh, to call me and because, because they had prayed with me uh, several years ago and the Lord had changed their life because like I always say, when you come into the presence of Jesus, when you let Jesus be your counselor, you'll never be the same again. So uh, they called together and um, I took them to where Jesus is in the most holy place and asked Jesus to show them what, what the, what the problem was, what was causing this, uh, you know, they're trying to live right. They're trying to do everything right, but it's just, nothing's working. And immediately something came up. Somebody had really hurt them and not only just hurt them, but hurt their whole family. And um, as a result, they carried this bitterness and resentment. And so I showed them how to take that bitterness and that resentment and the pain that they felt and suffered, what that person did, uh, betrayed them, betrayed their trust. They were a good friend and then they turned on them. And, and um, so, they, so I showed them how to put that emotion, put that stuff on Jesus on the cross and take it to his death and, and then thank him for taking it. So you actually see a transaction. I have this pain, I have this hurt, I have this resentment in my heart, and I'm giving it to you, Jesus, and I thank mm-hmm. you for taking it, and, and just literally see the transaction. So then the Lord would bring one instance after another. Uh, one of their siblings came to their mind how that sibling had hurt the person uh, pretty bad, you know, and, mm-hmm. and not felt accepted and stuff. So that pain, all the pain, all the, the pain is what turns to resentment and anger and, and, uh, and ultimately leads to unforgiveness in most cases. But I want to uh, read this interesting statement. It's from Matthew 18. And, and Jesus told the story where the, the man was forgiven, you know, 10,000 talents. And then mm-hmm. uh, somebody came to him that owed, owed him just a little bit. And he grabbed him by the neck and choked him and said, pay me what you owe me. And so then the uh, servant went and told the master that this guy had just been forgiven 10,000 talents, which was impossible to pay back. And so uh, the master, after he'd called him, said, you wicked servant, for I forgave you all the debt because you asked me, should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due him. Then it goes on to say, so my heavenly father also will do to you, to each of you, if from his heart he does not forgive his brother. God's going to turn us over to the tormentors. That's exactly what happens if we hold on to an unforgiving spirit, if we hold on to those resentments and pains. We are tormented. It's, it's, if it's not uh, mental, it's emotional, it's, it can become physical. And, and it can seriously affect our, our, not only our mental health, but our physical mm-hmm. health. Yes. So it was so interesting. The next day, the person called again, and, and they said, I have not slept like that in years. <laughs> that I, what we did is I, I just kept asking Jesus, is there anything else? And something else would come up, and he would put that on Jesus. Something else would come up, he'd put that on Jesus. And he said, nope, nothing else. I said, okay, so then we just prayed and we just thank God for taking all of that. And the next day there was no pain, uh, no symptoms. And so we, we all got together on Sunday night and, and the Bible says, uh, if anyone is sick, let the elders lay hands on him and anoint him with oil and pray for him. If there's any sins, they'll be forgiven and the Lord will raise them up. And we did that. And what a difference. What a difference, you know. I, so I want to pray for those. A lot of times we have little resentments, uh, things that have happened to us in the past, and we don't even think about them, you know. We don't realize that they're affecting us. We don't realize the impact that they're having on our life. Paul makes an interesting statement. He says, if I forgive anything, I forgive in the presence of Christ. There's something different that happens when you come into the presence of Christ. All of a sudden, these things, these wounds that have happened to us become real. And Jesus sees them. He'll expose them. He'll bring them right to the surface. 
in fact, uh, some uh, the Lord showed me something today that that happened uh, oh forty five years ago, and somebody did something. Somebody told something of, um, that I had said to them and told my fiance. Well, this was just after we met. Had had said that um, meant said that I had liked her or something like that. And it literally almost destroyed the relationship because she wasn't wanting a serious relationship at the time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just, you know, I, I, I really hurt me because it literally destroyed this relationship for months. And uh, that came back to my mind uh, today. And so I said, you know what, I need to let that pain and that, and that, that impact that that had on me go to the cross and he'll bring up all these things whatever it is no matter how far back it is he'll bring it to our minds and jesus is the most wonderful counselor and he sets us free amen to that indeed <laughs> yeah i like how you say jesus is the you know the best counselor because sometimes we pay our money um, to go to these, and there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with going to, going to a counselor, but no, sometimes it has its not, place. Exactly, but sometimes just talking to Jesus, He is also able to solve our problems and put us at peace. Especially what we are longing to have is peace in yes, our hearts. That's right. Amen. I have a friend who spent tens of thousands of dollars going to a counselor, and uh, we began to bring her to Jesus and pray with her in the presence of Jesus like that. She didn't have to go to counseling anymore. All that money she could use to do other things with. And, and God began to set her free. I mean, this is stuff that happened. Uh, daddy wounds. Her dad was, oh, just caused serious, serious wounds in her hearts. And there was so much anger and resentment and pain and rejection and, and betrayal and all these things that have deep, deep consequences in our life. And it mm -hmm. took it took probably a year and a half. You know, every time something would come up, we'd have to bring her to Jesus and okay, Lord, show where's what what's causing that. It was affecting she she couldn't have a relationship because of all these daddy issues, you know. And so God mm -hmm. was healing that, and now um, God's going to provide her with the ability to connect with somebody that's you know when it's time for her to be married. So that's it's exciting. God is good. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about divine guidance. You know, we live in a world where each step of our lives, sometimes we do not even know whether we should turn left or turn right. We are conflicted at times in what decision we should make. So today is going to be interesting talking about divine guidance. How does God guide us? How, what do we have to do? What are the steps that we take to ensure that we are depending upon God? So that's what we're going to get into and share with you today. So keep us in your prayer as we go through this. So we are at chapter 21 for those of you who have been following us. And we've been reading our book um, prior by Ellen G. White. Of course, we also do not believe in the Ellen G. White alone, so we also read our Bibles too, and we supplement it with the spirit of prophecy. So today, we're going to be talking about divine guidance, and it says here, the people of God are to be educated not to trust in human inventions and uncertain tests as a means of learning God's will concerning them. So not to trust in human inventions and uncertain tests. And I want to share something here. I once know about a person who would look for clues in nature. Nature is a way of God revealing things to us, but this person would look uh, on objects as a mean of God um, communicating certain decisions well, that they had to make. And they would look at like the, the license plate number and look at letters and numbers and the numbers all around to say, oh, no, this is what God means. And this is what God wants. And uh, it you sounds know, like I it'll remember, get you in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> but there are people who do like, you know, do these things. They use these numbers. They use if you hear the, the list of things that people use to decide you know, if they should make a certain decision or not, you will be alarmed. But we have the sure word of prophecy and yes. we do go by what it says. Yes. Um, 
So I had a talk with them. I did a little study about, you know, knowing God's voice because, you know, sometimes we can be led away because the devil just wants to see and, you know, see, we see us going off and then he takes advantage and he will lead us to the path of, um, you know, unfamiliar spirit to guide us in making decisions. And we don't want to make that, um, that mistake. So, you know, that's a, a principle that we should abide, abide by, by studying the word of God and listening what it says on certain matter, not just looking around in nature randomly and picking a number and saying, oh, that's what God wants me to do. Right. No. And we need to know his voice. This is one of my favorite quotations. It's, uh, this is not from our book. This is from Desire of Ages. Uh, page 668, which, which is my favorite page, I think, in Desire of Ages, mm -hmm. one of them. It's hard mm -hmm. for me to pick a favorite. But this is, uh, it says, but we are not to place the responsibility of our duty upon others mm -hmm. and wait for them to tell us what to do. We cannot depend for counsel upon humanity. The Lord will teach us our duty just as willingly as he will teach someone else. If we come to him in faith, he will speak his mysteries to us personally. Our hearts will often burn within us as one draws nigh to commune with us as he did with Enoch. Now you can see why that's one of my favorite quotes. Mm -hmm. God, we, we must hear his voice. And if we will come to him in faith, he, we will learn uh, to know that still small voice. Amen. You know, there's a verse that I always use. It's, I think it's Proverbs 3 and verse 5 and 6. Yes, yes. Say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You know, I've used that verse throughout when oh, making decisions yes. of my life. That's a standby. You just, you just have to rely on those, you know? Yes. Um, it says here, and you know, Elder David, you were talking earlier about surrendering, and it says here, you know, surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up at his provid and as his providence shall indicate. And I like the part where it says, surrender your plans to him, not, not just the plans that you want him to carry out, but also the plans that you might have, where God will say, hey, no, you have to give that up. And you're like, what, Lord? And God is saying, yes, that's not my plan for you. And it's just so hard sometimes because sometimes you make your plan, what you're going to do, and then you bring them to God. And God says no for some of them. And I believe sometimes, even as Christians, it's hard for us to let go of something that we clearly see that God is saying no to. But because of our selfish, um, selfish nature, we sometimes tend to hold on to it and hurt ourselves. So we're also going to pray for you if you have such a struggle. We are rebellious by nature, and that nature has to die. <laughs> Otherwise, we it, it will, self, will it self destruct. <laughs> <laughs> Our old nature is self destructive and will lead to much, <laughs> much pain and suffering. Yeah. Don't ask me how I know so much about <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, not a word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you speak much wisdom. I leave it at that. <laughs> Here's another one too. It says this, and this is interesting. It says, a knowledge of the truth depends not so much upon strength of intellect as upon pureness of purpose. The simplicity of, the, of an earnest, dependent faith to those who in humility of heart seek for divine guidance, angels of God draw near. The Holy Spirit is given to open to them the riches, the rich treasures of truth. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that too. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Yes. Not man, you know or anything else yeah. you know i like this line it says you must learn to see with your brain as well as your eyes and as christians sometimes we look just through our eyes and i'm not saying that we should just use our brain alone but you know the bible says we walk by faith not by sight but that takes using our our brains also right yeah you our know when i think of eyesight. 
Exactly. When I think of the story of David and Goliath, sometimes I wonder, why didn't David just go up to Goliath and talk to him and says, you know, the Lord <laughs> have a conversation. Why did he have to kill him? <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not advocating killing because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. But I'm just saying there, you know, in different in different circumstances of life, we have to take different approach. You know, Ecclesiastic says there is a time and a place for everything. And I believe, um, you know, Back in the olden time, God, God was guiding them. But sometimes when we have to make a decision, it also called for wisdom. Maybe that was not a good example. So I'm going to quickly suggest, use another example. I had a friend that went to China and she was in some places where um, they were like having worship, but Bibles were illegal in that particular particular spot and then I think she met with the police and the police asked her to show show where they were meeting and she answered in a way that was not telling the truth but was not leading them to where they were worshiping so when I said that I mean sometimes we have to pray for God to give us wisdom in how to respond to certain situations mm -hmm. yeah so using our brains <laughs> yes. with the guidance of the Holy Spirit This is an interesting one, talking to parents. We certainly need a lot of wisdom. I, I don't, before I call my boys, I spend time in prayer and asking for the Holy Spirit and asking for divine guidance and wisdom. Yes. Because um, parenting is so difficult, you know. We, it's so easy to not, to, to not know how to connect with them, not know how to be what they need as a, in a parent. And, and this is a beautiful, uh, it says, parents, humble your hearts before God. Mm -hmm. Begin a thorough work with your children. Plead with the Lord for, to forgive your disregard for his word in neglecting to train your children in the way they should go. Ask for light and for guidance, for, t for a tender conscience, and for clear discernment that you may see your mistakes and failures. Mm -hmm. God will hear such prayers and and from a humble and contrite heart. Um, I'm, I'm so excited that, you know, as we humble ourselves and we recognize, yeah, we've made mistakes and yeah, we've, we've uh, caused our children to not maybe love the Lord as much as they should, which was in my case. Um, so as I humble myself and, and ask for his forgiveness and acknowledge my part in, in them, not being able to come to Jesus. In the last year, two of them now have come to Jesus and have been converted. And in fact, uh, they're doing Bible studies together. And, and I spent like two hours Sabbath, last Sabbath, uh, praying with one of them and talking about um, issues that need, uh, uh, habits that need to be broken, you know, that from the mm -hmm. past that, and, uh, so, and it was just, it was a beautiful experience. And not only that, you know, that testimony I told about the person that, um, that needed healing prayer. Mm -hmm. um, it was right after I got done talking with my son and, and, and I was able to talk about what my struggles are. He was talking about what his struggles are. And we, we prayed and we turned, put them over on Jesus that was the necessary preparation for me to be ready to pray with this other person. Um, it's, it's like, unless the Lord is able to clean our life and we surrender our issues to Jesus, we let the Lord search our hearts to see what's there uh, so that we can be clean and, and pure before him and, and righteous before him. Um, then we can't help others. So, mm. um, so Lord, let there be revival and let it begin with me. Once mm -hmm. it begins with us, then it will start spreading to others around us. Yes. Um, I once saw a quotation that says, train up a child in the way you should go, but be sure to go that way yourself. And <laughs> like it is <laughs> it has stuck with me because, you know, what the Lord has shown me since I became a mother, I've never seen it before, but every impulse a child picks up on it. Yes. <laughs> that yes. you don't have to say, but a child picks up yes. when you're sad. That's why I believe I was, when I was preparing to become a mother, I used to read um, child guidance. And I remember reading something where before the child is born, 
they can feed on your emotions they will, they, yes, and, yes, and they pick will. up everything. So yes. can you imagine when they are graced into the presence of this world much more, they can pick up your emotions. So yes. we're pleading with you, live the life, not just teach them yes. to have worship with Christ, but make sure you are having that worship with Christ in your own personal time with God too. Yes. Um, I want to share something here. It says toilers. Um, just about praying, you know, we're talking about divine guidance, you know, while praying. It says whether, you know, wherever you are, whatever circumstance you're under, and it says toilers in the busy walks of life, crowded and almost overwhelmed with perplexity, can send up a petition to God for divine guidance. In times of sudden difficulty or peril, the heart may send up its cry for help to the one who has pledged himself to come to the aid of his faithful believing ones whenever they call upon him. In every circumstance, under every condition, the soul weighed down with grief and care or fiercely assailed by temptation may find assurance, support, and succor in the unfailing love and power of a covenant-keeping God. You know, it says that God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what assurance that gives us that we ourselves, and we were talking earlier, Elder David and I, that, you know, Christ is the best counselor you can ever have. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get on the phone and, uh, you know, and t tell your whole life story, you know, what is tearing and eating you apart. But you can bow down on your knee and talk to God as a friend, pour out your heart to him. And, you know, we were talking earlier about like the struggles that we have, you know, their mental issues that people struggle with, their divorce, there are people who have been widow, there are people who have struggling with drug addiction, infertility problem, physical abuse, verbal abuse, poverty, betrayal, unforgiveness, abortion, all these things, there are people struggling with these issues. And sometimes they are not met with people in our churches who they can talk with and relate to, but there is a friend in Jesus. And we're introducing this friend to you that you can pour down. Not everyone has to know your story. And that is not what God wants you to do, to publicize your story out there. He wants you to have a personal relationship with him where you can come and you can pour out, as it says, in time of sudden difficulty or peril, the heart may send up its cry for help. He is a covenant keeping God. He has been a faithful friend to me. And this is the same Jesus we want to introduce you to. He's touched with everything that you and I, Elder David, and anyone else watching this program that we go through. That's right. There is a text that says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Sometimes it's important. In fact, from my experience, um, the Lord had me go to a pastor and tell him I was struggling. Uh, people with addiction problems often have to do that. It's like, mm -hmm. as long as it stays uh, private, as long as you, it's like if you're drinking or something and you're sneaking around and you think nobody knows, they may know, but as long as you're trying to hide it, you will not gain the victory. Mm. Uh, that's why AA says you need to admit it. Look, I'm struggling with alcohol. That's, uh, that's a fault. People say, well, I have a couple faults. Uh, tell, saying that you're alcoholic is not confessing your sin. That's what you did last night. If you went out and drank last <laughs> night, you don't have to tell somebody you went out and had a drink last night. But you can say, I struggle with alcohol. I'm an alcoholic. Well, that is a fault that you have. So mm -hmm. it's different than confessing your sin. The sin is the act that you do. The fault is the habit that you have. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you have a, a habit that you have been praying and claiming promises and not gaining victory over, let, ask the Lord if there's somebody that you can confess your faults to and pray for one another. Mm -hmm. the, Lord, the Lord is good like that. And I went to a godly pastor and that was the beginning of my ministry. That was the transformative uh, transitional uh, experience of my life. I've never been the same since. And it started me in ministry because I learned how to bring people into the presence of Jesus and watch Jesus bring healing and restoration to them because that's mm -hmm. what he did to me. So mm -hmm. um, there is a, there is a place for, receiving victory yourself so that you can be effective in bringing other people to Christ. Praise God. Mm. 
Here's a quotation that says, Christ in his life on earth made no plans for himself. Mm -hmm. He accepted God's plans for him. And day by day, the father unfolded his plans. So should we depend upon God that our lives may be the simple outworking of his will. As we commit our ways to him, he will direct our steps. That's powerful. Amen. Um, I have two more points. Uh, I'll share this one. It says, he who saw Nathaniel under the fig tree will see us in the secret place of prayer. Angels from the world of light are near to those who in humility seek for divine guidance. Um, you know, if you know the story about Nathaniel being under the fig tree, I think he's in St. John, St. John 1. And, you know, Jesus saw him and, you know, talk, talk to him, I think. Yeah, St. John 1, 46 to 50, you know, talk about it. And Jesus said, you know, be all an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. And Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. You know, I believe Jesus was a man of humor. And <laughs> he was just asking him because of that, you know, but I just want to say that, you know, when it says Nathaniel, he who saw Nathaniel on the fig tree will see us in circuit place. You know, God knows us. It's just telling us that we can't hide anything from God. We can hide from our parents. We can hide from our children. We can hide from the pastor or our neighbors, but everything is laid, laid bare before the eyes of God. He's the omniscient yes. one and he sees more than what anyone else can see. And, you know, as Elder David was talking about, you know, confessing our sin, you know, Christ wants to reach that, wants us to reach that place of, you know, confessing our fault, whether it's in someone that we trust or just confessing it all to Jesus. But he wants us to confess and to accept his forgiveness and to start yes. living life uh, more abundantly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually seeing a transaction. My stuff ends up on Jesus he takes it to his death on the cross. I have it no more. Amen. Too many in planning for a brilliant future make an utter failure. Let God plan for you. Amen. As a little child, trust to the guidance of him who will keep the feet of his saints. 1 Samuel 2, 9. God has, now this is a, this is a, is a beautiful one. God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led if they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are, are fulfilling as co-workers with him. That is so beautiful. Amen. You know, it's so hard to trust God sometimes, but he can see the future and you can't. And who else are you going to trust? You're going to trust yourself? I've learned the hard way, too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> another story for another time. I think I've told quite a few stories of how many <laughs> things that I've done. <laughs> Learned the hard way. Yeah, but you know, God is a God of love, and I thank God for that. Yeah, my last uh, last uh, sharing is just the last part of page two twenty four. It's just so beautiful. It says, the visible and the invisible world are in close contact. Could the veil be lifted, we see evil angels pressing their darkness around us and working with all their power to deceive and destroy. Wicked men are surrounded, influenced, and aided by evil spirits. The man of faith and prayer has yielded his soul to divine guidance. This is a beautiful part. And angels of God bring him light and strength from heaven. So even though we are surrounded by darkness, we have one in whom there is complete life and there is light and strength found in him. So praise God for that. Amen. You know, we're, we're entering the time where the judgments of God are being revealed in the world. And the promise is uh, that when this time happens, when the world experiences God's judgments, the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. 
it's during this time that the latter rain begins to be poured out and the promise is arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And that's where we're at right now. And, and people, are, people are beginning to see that the Holy Spirit is being poured out. People's lives are being changed. We simply need to humble ourselves before God and confess our sins and ask him to give us his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He will not only change us, but begin to pour out his spirit so that we can be the effective tool to bring other people to Jesus. And uh, it really gets exciting when you see other people's lives being changed and you know it wasn't you, it was Jesus all the way because he's just good like that. Yes, it's just it's just such a powerful thing, you know. Your last statement, you said, it's just so powerful when you can see people's lives being transformed. Yes. Can you imagine just on a broader scale, like somebody who was just like a a killer or a thief, and you see them just becoming, a, 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 I mean, modern day. We we have many stories in the Bible of conversion, but you know, but, well, Saul to Paul, but yes. a modern day Saul to think of it being transformed into you know like this godly man, just God fearing. It just shows the power of God over the evil that is present in our world. And I'm just praying that you know God just open eyes to see. Yes, we need to expect far more from God than we have traditionally expected of Him. We're living in the time of the latter rain where God is going to do things that we aren't used to seeing. So we need to expect more. And, and when you start seeing things that, wow, I've never seen that before, you say, is it biblical? Is this according to the word? Because a lot of people, when they saw things that they didn't expect, began to reject things. Um, just like when Jesus came, they rejected Jesus. And it's when the Holy Spirit's poured out, people re will reject him again if they're not uh, pressing on to know the Lord, if they're not asking Jesus to reveal the inner workings of their heart, they're not pressing in close to Jesus. Uh, evil angels will cause us to spurn and reject and, and uh, we'll actually start turning away from the very light that, that's coming from heaven. Mm -hmm. It will be falling on those all around us, and yet we won't recognize or receive it. Right. I don't want to be in that position, and I know you don't either. Yes. All right. So, yes. Do you want to share, let's or should pray. we go into prayer? Yeah, let's as we pray. like, let's pray a lot. So, um, I'll be praying for us to become you know, becoming overcomers and, you know, just, just not just spiritual overcomers, but I want to pray for overcoming some of the habits that we mentioned earlier, like, you know, drug addiction, um, uh, whatever, you know, poverty, betrayal, um, you know, just being overcomers in Christ and as Christ empower us to, um, as we become overcomers to also help others to become overcomers and Elder David, you're going to be, do you want to share a little bit about what you will be praying about today? Well, um, yeah, I want to. Surrendering wanna, to God and having the spirit of forgiveness, right? Yes, mm -hmm. spirit of forgiveness. But not only that, um, um, when my son and I, we spent two hours on the phone and, and I was telling him things that I struggle with that uh, I need to see victory in. And he was telling me things that he struggles with. And as we prayed together, it was just the synergy and the Holy Spirit was just blessing. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I want everybody to have that experience with their children or with people around them. And uh, the Lord's always told me, if I will humble myself and, and uh, acknowledge that I struggle too, uh, then they think, if they know that I'm struggling with stuff and I need their prayers, then it's easy mm -hmm. for them to open up and talk about what they're struggling with. We all don't struggle with the same things, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Mm -hmm. And um, but we all have things that we struggle with, and, and that's all right. Uh, when we bind together, we need to press together, press together, press together, uh, especially in this time of the latter rain, because God's going to 
use each one of us to be a blessing and help each other. We're going to be a part, we're, we're forming the body of Christ, where each one of us has our part and, and position and work in the body of Christ. And, and all of our gifts and abilities are different, but we each have to work together so mm -hmm. that we, um, so that the body of Christ begins to function as Christ's own body. Now, I do my part, you do your part, and those that are listening to us will do their part. And we will uh, come into the unity of the faith to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what he wants from us. We will be his bride. He is putting together his bride. He is fitting her with his own wedding garment, which is his own beautiful character. Mm. That's what he has for us. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Oh, Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We lift you up, O oh God, for you are the great creator of heaven and earth and everything that is in it. Lord, we just recognize you as our high priest, O oh God, ministering for us in the most holy place. Lord Jesus, you said in your word that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Father, Today, I want to pray especially for those who are listening in the reach of our voice, those who are not who are not tuned into this program. We also mention, want to mention them in prayer, Lord. Father, there's so many struggles that we have individually, many of our different problems, Lord, problems in the home, problems with um, different maybe relatives, uh, problems with our children, Lord, problems with um, friends with uh, maybe co-workers, Lord, different struggles that we have, Lord. We just want to present them before your, your throne, Lord. We ask that, Lord, you wash us, Lord, that you cleanse us with your precious blood from Calvary Cross. Lord Jesus, we cannot survive a day without your Holy Spirit being poured out upon us. For as your word says, not by might or by strength, Lord, but it is by your spirit that we can become overcomers, Lord. And that is what I want to pray for today, Lord, for each and every one of us to become become an overcomer, Lord. I pray that you will fit us with the with the, the old armor of God that is mentioned in Ephesians, Lord, the helmet, Lord, God of salvation, Lord, um, the shield of faith, Lord, the sword of the spirit, breastplate of righteousness, or loins girded about with truth, Lord God, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, because we are in a spiritual warfare in the middle of the great controversy, Lord, and we know that this great uh, battle is taking place, oh God, between the e evil uh, forces and the and, and, and Christ and his, his army, oh God. But we know what the end of this battle is. But Lord, what we want more than anything is to be filled with your spirit, Lord. Because we know we're approaching the end of all things, Lord. And we want to be counted in that number, Lord, that will go to, to reign with you, Lord, in the new Jerusalem. But I pray that, Lord, you will keep us faithful, Lord. Help us to look heavenward. Help us to be like those in the Bible who didn't give up their faith, Lord. Help us to be like a Daniel, oh God. Even the midst of them turning over us to the authority, we will not bow. Help us to be like the three Hebrew boys, to have the faith of, um, of Moses, of Noah, oh God, these great men of the Bible. Esther, oh God, help us to have this faith, God, that will sustain us in the midst of the, the trials here on earth and what is to come. We thank you, Lord, that there is mercy and there is justice with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, I just want to lift up uh, each person listening here. And Lord, if uh, I just ask that you would bring us into your presence. I'm asking that you, because of the blood of Jesus, you would bring us boldly before your throne. Lord, I'm, I'm pressing them in the hands of faith uh, where Jesus is standing um, before the Ark of the Covenant, where he is making a final atonement, where he is making us finally at one for the marriage that we would be his bride. Father, I'm just asking that in your presence that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that we would receive the eye salve, and that we would um, be able to see the truth about our true condition, and that you would that you would uh, expose to us, the, especially like like my friend who called, who didn't realize that there were areas, wounds that have happened, uh, resentment and bitterness uh, with people from the past that were having such an impact 
upon their life. Father, I just ask that you would expose any roots of bitterness, any, any uh, uh, wounds and, and hurts and pain and um, resentment that we're holding on to. Father, you said that in your word that if we don't forgive from the heart, that we will be turned over to the tormentors. Lord, I don't want any of my friends to suffer torment and, uh, by, the en- by the hands of the enemy. Uh, Paul says, if I forgive anything, I forgive in the presence of Christ. Uh, for uh, we are not, uh, we don't, that, that lest Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So, Father, we know that if we are not forgiving, then the enemy takes advantage of us. And we understand that, Lord. But sometimes we don't see what he's doing. And I ask that in your presence, Lord, you would expose the works of darkness, that you would expose the, the works of the enemy. And Father, I just ask that you would bring healing and restoration. I'm asking that, that you would lift the burdens of pain, of rejection, of, of uh, betrayal, of doubt and fear, the, um, things where people have hurt us. And Lord, we just want to give you not only... Uh, uh, we ask that you would receive the pain that we've suffered as a result of people doing these things to us. We give those things to you and we thank you for taking them. We thank you that you bore them to your death and we don't have to bear them anymore and that we don't bear them anymore. Father, I just praise your name for that. Lord, I just ask that you would bring us into your presence daily, that we would, that we would be serious, that we would see the work that Jesus is doing in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, that we would draw close to him so that we would know how to cooperate with him in this final work that he's doing. Father, I just ask that you would hold back the winds of strife. Father, you said that the the four angels that stand on on the four corners of the earth are holding back the winds until God's people are sealed in their foreheads. Father, I just ask that you would hold back the winds of strife until you have put your seal uh, and and you have clothed us with the full righteousness of Christ till we are raised to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ according to your word. Father, I just ask that you would uh, wash us with the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, you guys, we'll be praying for you. And if you do have a prayer request, you can send them over to prayerpowerprinciples at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep us in your prayers. We will see you guys next week. God bless you. Amen.